This is a video of the pyramids in Egypt, and now it is 3D. This is a video of Gastown in Vancouver, and we also made it in 3D. This is Castle de Verdera in Catalonia, and guess what? It's now in 3D. But how on earth did we create each of these 3D scenes in less than one hour? There is absolutely no way we could have modeled these environments to this level of photorealism. Let me introduce you, my friends, to 3D Gaussian splatting, or in short, G-spot, which is the latest method to create an entire complex 3D scene using only a video. It falls under the category of radiance fields, much like nerves, but it's actually quite different. Same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Here's the thing. G-splats are faster to train and you can achieve unprecedented level of detail with crazy fast real-time rendering. So let's go and find out how it all works. First, we begin with a set of input photos that are taken at different angles from a subject. Now these input photos can also be extracted from a video as an image sequence. Next, using a mathematical method called structure from motion, the differences between these images are calculated to form the 3D point cloud. Think of it as many dots in 3D space with each dot representing a point from your photos. Now instead of trying to create a detailed model with polygons, each point is turned into what we call a Gaussian. A Gaussian on a graph takes a shape like this. So if you were to imagine it in 2D space, it'd be like a Photoshop paintbrush that has a dense center, which fades out towards the edges. Now imagine in 3D space, these Gaussians take the shape of ellipsoid. What's amazing about this is that these Gaussians can take various parameters, such as transparency values, different sizes, and even color. At this point, the Gaussians enter an iterative optimization process, which is key to its quality and performance. These Gaussians get fine-tuned constantly to match the original photos that we took by adjusting their 3D positions, color, opacity, and how their details vary from different directions. The training also uses an adaptive density control, which means when a Gaussian is too transparent, it gets removed. Or when a Gaussian is too big for a detailed part of the scene, it splits into two. To view these Gaussians, we use a technique called rasterization, which projects them onto a 2D surface. We consider their distance from the viewer for depth, and then for each pixel, we'll calculate how much each Gaussian contributes to that pixel. And with all these ingredients, you tend to end up with a quality that is better than the other radiance field approaches and training times that are faster. There you have it, guys. This was a simplified version of our own understanding from the paper that was published for 3D Gaussian splatting. Yeah, the paper's pretty complex, and if you're a science geek and you wanna learn the entire breakdown, the link of the paper is gonna be in the description below. Now, as for us, after we're done with this explainer video, we're moving on to more experiments with Gaussian splatting, plus, we're gonna be testing it with virtual production. So, if you are interested at all in any of this, make sure you subscribe. Wait, wait, actually, have they we? haven't subscribed yet? Haven't you? You mean you watch all of this and you still haven't subscribed? What is going on?